I just wanted to give a brief review of mineral identification. Um, hopefully this is all review for you guys. Um, this would have been something that you learned in your lecture portion. Um, but just in case, um, when you're trying to identify minerals, you're looking at the physical properties of the mineral. So you're looking at the color, you know, is it purple, yellow, clear, white, pink, um, the luster, is it metallic looking or non-metallic? Street color, so the color that the mineral leaves behind when it's crushed to powder. The hardness, which is a relative scale that I'll go over here in a minute. And then the crystal habit. So what does the overall shape of the mineral look like? Does it exhibit repetitive breakage, which is referred to as cleavage? or does it look like if I smack it with a hammer, it's just gonna shatter, which is fracture. So color is pretty self-explanatory. Luster, like I said, it looks like metal. It's, it reflects the light very highly. Um, street color is determined using a ceramic plate. Um, and so you would be taking the mineral and scraping it along the ceramic plate and seeing what color that mineral is once it's powdered. So for this mineral, which happens to be metallic in its luster, um, it leaves behind a dark gray, almost black street color. So the one of the other properties um, is hardness. And so for hardness, you have the Mohs hardness scale, which is a relative scale. Um, I've written out some of the minerals um, and their approximate hardness. So the scale ranges from one to 10. One is the softest, 10 is obviously the hardest with a diamond. Um, talc is a mineral that um, for you women who wear makeup, you're probably very familiar. It's talcum powder um, that goes into making foundation. Um, gypsum is a relatively soft mineral, um, but when it's compressed, it goes into making up gypsum board. Calcite, fluorite, um, then kind of in the middle range of hardness, we have quartz, which is a very predominant mineral um, on our surface. Um, and then of course, diamond is the hardest. And so how do we figure out the hardness of the minerals? Well, we use certain tools. So one of the tools is your fingernail which has an approximate hardness of two and a half on the Mohs scale. Um, this doesn't mean that you're taking the mineral and scratching it on your fingernail. It means, can I pick up the mineral and scratch it with my fingernail, okay? So obviously we're not trying to hurt ourselves here. Um, another tool that we use is a copper penny which has a relative hardness of three and a half. So again, you're not, you're not seeing if the copper penny scratches on the mineral, you're gonna see if the mineral scratches and leaves a mark on the penny, okay? Um, same with the glass plate, which has a hardness of about five and a half. And then the ceramic plate that you use um, to determine the street color has a hardness of about six and a half. So when you're trying to determine the relative hardness of a mineral, you're gonna use those tools um, to kind of get your range of hardness. So obviously if it scratches a penny, then it's harder than three and a half, but if it doesn't scratch the glass plate, then it's softer than five and a half. So probably the range of hardness for that would be about a four, four or five for that mineral, okay? Um, the last physical property is crystal habit. And it's probably one of the more difficult ones to determine. Um, I have two mineral specimens here. One exhibits cleavage and the other exhibits a uh, crystal form or fracture, okay? So if I was to smack this one with a hammer, you can see that those planes are nice and even, they're predictable, they repeat. So one side is oriented in the same position as an opposite side. This is cleavage, okay? The other is fracture or crystal form, and that is a form of crystal habit. In this case, if I was to smack this with a hammer, all I would do is shatter these really beautiful crystal pendants, okay?
So these are the seven.